Hi, uh, this is Neil Shah, VP Research at CounterPoint Research, and welcome to CounterPoint Conversations. Today, I have a very special guest, Mike Nefkens, CEO of Year, and uh, we're going to discuss about the overall Year's vision, strategy, and the progress so far, and some exciting announcements at CES. Mike, uh, you have taken the reins for almost over a year now, and uh, it's not easy to take reins of a, a company which is leader in the industry. And there's so much pressure in terms of growing always and maintain that leadership position, right? Since you have come, what is your vision and strategy to accelerate the growth at here? Yeah, thanks, Neil. First off, thanks for having me. It's great to see you again. So, uh, but um, yeah, so we've had a very good 2024. And as you said, uh, I've been on board, um, it's been about 14, 15 months 14 now. Months. So uh, it feels much longer than that. But um, <laughs> But we're really excited to be here at CES today. And uh, 2024, really for us, uh, the focus really was stabilizing the company, getting the support from our board and our shareholders, and also um, um, putting out a new strategy for the company. Hmm. Um, so we were able to accomplish all of that in 2024. And at the same time, we drove really the best financials we've had in almost a decade. Anyways. So um, it was a, a big check mark uh, for the team. Um, we took share in the industry. Mm -hmm. So back to your question about leading. Uh, for me, it's all about when you're the industry leader, you want to be taking share and you want to be seen by your customers as having you know the best quality, the best interaction, and also having them be excited about your innovation roadmap. And we right. were able to introduce our customers to our new strategic offerings in Q4 of last year, and uh, we're starting to see some traction on that. So overall, a great year for here, a really good start. Um, you know, I tell my team, I'm probably a year ahead of where I thought I'd be at this time. Great. I put all that on the team. Uh, the team did an amazing job of giving me the time to be able to focus on strategy and on what's next, and we were right. able to accomplish that in 2024. Fantastic. So in terms of your long-term vision and foundation for the company, what are the different uh, levers you are turning to have it a strong foundation for yeah. the future growth for the next five years. And um, I, I could see some, uh, as we have discussed more over the year and following here uh, for the year, uh, what, what are the different uh, areas you're focusing on, especially in terms of uh, your business, core businesses? Yeah. So, yeah, so first off, for us being a private company, um, you know, the core foundational piece is financial stability. Mm. And we were able to accomplish that. Um, you know, we generated uh, quite a bit positive cash flow in 2024. We're able to reinvest that into yeah. the new items. Uh, that positive cash flow journey actually started in 2023, where we were finally able to break the positive uh, mark. So that's step number one is financial stability. Um, and that includes cash flow, but also on the top line and on bookings. Mm. So, uh, so again, check mark there. The other piece is to have our shareholders and our board um, behind our priorities and behind our strategy, which mm -hmm. we are also able to accomplish. So those become the foundational pieces to be able to build a new strategy and execute a new vision. Yes, and in terms of offerings, yeah. what, what has been the different changes you have done? The foundation. Yeah, so the biggest change for us is, um, I, I'm going to be really hard on here right now. The biggest change for us is we didn't really have offerings. We had a, a massive map database. Mm -hmm. And we basically went to our customers and said, we'll build whatever you want. And then we built them a custom solution. So we ended up having, I'll just use an example. Let's say we have a thousand customers. We ended up having a thousand custom, custom solutions. And what that meant is every time we made a change in, in the map, we had to go change it a thousand times. <clears throat> so the big change for us is we are moving to a roadmap which takes most of our custom solutions to more of a standardized product. Mm -hmm. And the, the real dream is when we change uh, one item in a map, it changes it for all of our customers at once. Right. So that's where we need to go. And our so our biggest challenge right now and our biggest opportunity is walking our customers through our new portfolio. Mm -hmm. Our new portfolio really consists of, and you know me, I like to be like overly simplistic, two different product offerings. Mm -hmm. We have a base map, which we call Symphony Core, and then we have our premium services. Mm -hmm. 
Now on the premium services, it's a bit of a menu. So there are a lot of things in there like sure. the range factors, um, you know, we've got uh, advanced driving capabilities, we've got fleet management, there are a lot of different items there. But that's really what we're doing and those are standards. And our vision is that for our customers, it's 80% standard and then we'll customize the last 20% for them. So that's what we're doing. So really for us right now, it's getting our customers comfortable with that new roadmap and giving them incentives to get on that roadmap so that they can benefit from a fresher map and mm -hmm. from lower TCO. That's great. And uh, talking about the premium map and getting towards more advanced driving, right? So that three pillars, which I see for advanced driving, which is like software, silicon, and sensors, yep. right? So obviously you have uh, great capabilities maps which touch all these uh, three uh, pillars, right? How are you thinking of leveraging all these three together yeah. and uh, including into the map? Yeah, yeah. So um, when you take a look at that kind of software, silicon and sensors, um, you know, the, the missing piece there is those systems, we'll just call them mm. systems, they need a reference architecture to get a single point of ground truth. And um, what we're talking about now is we're not talking about navigation anymore. We're talking about a base map that is mm -hmm. a single source of ground truth that can power multiple use cases in the vehicle that will work with the silicon, with the software, and with the sensors. Um, the best example of that really for me is you know, everyone understands if you have a car that just has sensors in it, the moment you have you know, rain or snow, those sensors really don't work that well right. anymore. Um, so the sensors and the map need to work together. And, um, and, and, and they need to work together to, number one, drive that automated driving function, but also send back gaps or issues when mm -hmm. they see one in the sensor or when they see one in the map. So that's the future. So the future is a world where these things work together symbiotically uh, versus the sensor guy saying they can do everything and, yeah. or versus the map guy saying we can do everything. <laughs> And I think the OEMs are finally realizing that and they're forcing that collaboration. Right. And I think it's a linchpin, the maps. Uh, it, as you said, it's a, it's a ground truth. Yeah. Right. And, it's, uh, and you, I think you made a very good point when you were discussing earlier that uh, it's about safety. Yeah. Map presence, represents safety. Right? Yeah. I, I tell people all the time, um, I believe that uh, every human being that gets in the car deserves to have a live map that provides speed limit, you know, incidents, traffic, um, and just a the best depiction of the road network out there to keep people safe. And um, so it is a safety function. And um, I'm hoping, you know, to be the number one evangelist for the map in the world that lets people know that it is a safety feature. It's, right. uh, you know, it's funny, the first thing I do when I get in the car and I turn my car and I look at my map to see, is it telling me I'm in the right spot? The moment it shows me I'm in the right spot, I get a sense of relief that, hey, <laughs> the car understands context. Right. And I feel like, you know, this machine is going to be safe for me. Um, you know, getting into a vehicle that doesn't have a map is scary. By the way, that's the other piece. Right now, <laughs> only 48% of vehicles uh, produced have a map in it. So, you know, back to our vision, our vision is that every single moving vehicle will have a here map in it by 2035. That's where That's we're, dri we're driving towards. That's awesome. And uh, let's fast forward to the announcements at CES. So, series of announcements. Can you talk about the BMW announcement and how closely you're working with them and yeah. enabling the future of driving? Yeah. Yeah, so we're very excited. Um, you know, BMW has been our you know premier partner from an innovation perspective. Um, they have been the one that's really uh, worked with us to get Qualcomm and here together and BMW to really focus on what we just talked about. Uh, but we're also showcasing uh, one of the new BMW 7 Series here at CES mm -hmm. uh, that has our full database in it. Um, uh, BMW is also launching a couple new vehicles in the next day or two here, which will be very exciting that also has here in it as well. So uh, we have multiple announcements ar around what we're doing with VW, uh, BMW and, um, you know, we're extremely excited to, to be their right. partner. Um, not only for our map data, but uh, for our premium features as well as, uh, you know, the relationship with Qualcomm. Yeah. You also touched upon, uh, while you have great traction leadership position in Weston, uh, among Western OEMs, right? But also there is growing traction with Chinese OEMs which are looking yeah. to expand yeah. globally, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so we in 2024, we actually had a very good year in our Asia Pacific business. And, um, you know, some of the larger OEMs there really grew with us. Uh, but the other area of growth was, uh, you know, Chinese OEMs for export, mm -hmm. uh, in particular, Chinese OEMs that were looking for mapping in Europe and, uh, you know, so export for Europe. And, um, you know, we're doing uh, business now with, um, you know, probably more than 10 Chinese OEMs uh, for export. And uh, it's going quite well, all the way from BYD uh, to Cherry to uh, some of the other startup OEMs. So that's been a, a nice hedge for us uh, right. uh, compared to what's going on with some of the Western OEMs. Yeah. That's fantastic. You also had a few announcements yep. uh, like with AWS, yep. right? So yeah, you can talk, so, touch up on that. Yeah, a couple you know, big announcements for us. Um, we did uh, announce today here at CES uh, a 10-year partnership with AWS. It is a technology partnership that is focused on helping us with advanced map making. Yeah. Um, this is about really helping us um, you know, provide freshness in a map. Freshness is you know, how quick we can get a change into a map, which a couple of years ago was three months. <laughs> And our goal is to get that down to 24, 48 hours. Wow. So um, the only way we can do that is with some of the AWS new tooling and with AI and um, you know, with support from their engineers um, to be able to do that. So we're really excited about uh, the AWS partnership. Yeah. It is a 10 year partnership, so it's a long term commitment. And um, you know, we are committed to uh, supporting the OEMs in their SDB journey. Yeah, that is huge. And I think it's a significant milestone for here. Yeah. It's a big one. And then we've got a couple other announcements. Um, we've got a really cool tech demo with Qualcomm here where there's an advanced driving circuit. It's a hands-free driving circuit, which is basically the Qualcomm chip and, you know, sensing stack with our map. So it's wow. a great a great example of what it should look like. Right. And uh, so I know there are a lot of people doing that demo. Um, we've got uh, TOG, uh, which is a Turkish OEM, which is, um, you know, already in production of their new vehicle, mm -hmm. which has a very cool stack in it. Um, which our map is the core of. And um, we've got um, you know, several other announcements uh, around customers that, uh, that we're excited about. So this is gonna be a fantastic CES. Uh, yeah. We've kind of doubled our presence from last year. We're finally in the West Hall here where right. a lot of the automotive and technology guys are. Um, so we're super excited to be here. We have the BMW on the floor and then we have the Lotus on the floor as well. And the Lotus is quite unique because um, most of what we sell, we sell the data and some software mm -hmm. for the OEMs and they build a map, but the Lotus is actually our full stack solution. Oh, really? So wow. it is our full yeah. software stack in a vehicle and, uh, and it is a live map. So it's one of my favorites to show off because it just shows mm -hmm. what here can do. Definitely check it out. Yeah, you'll yeah. love it. It's a nice yeah. looking car too. <laughs> right. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, thanks for all thanks. the insights and updates. Oh, it's great to see and you. And, uh, great yeah. progress. Thank you for and all And congratulations support. on all the announcements. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.